Hey everybody, this is Craig Call, the director of Nature Reliance School, and welcome to my workbench at the house. It's quite a mess, but I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a survival bracelet using the Cobra Stitch. Thanks for joining us. First thing you want to do is find out what the distance is where you're going to have the bracelet, which is find the spot where you would normally carry your bracelet or wear it and on your wrist. Measure that distance all the way around with a piece of cordage, uh, usually right along that bone where it's the widest is where I like to get it. Measure that distance. Once you have that distance, and mine happens to be eight and a half inches, I'm going to double that and add two inches to that length to make the base of what I'm going to build this bracelet on. Once you make any cut on paracord, you'll have, if you're not aware, you'll have seven strands down inside the outer sheath. It's called a kermantle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to burn those together so they basically are melted together and form one small piece it's all formed together rather than having everything frayed and falling apart on us later. It actually won't fall apart. It just makes this a little bit neater if you burn the ends of them. The next task is to simply tie an overhand knot with the pieces that you've put together. Again, this is that piece that I cut the whole length. And again, this is double plus two inches, uh, double the length of my wrist and two inches added to it. Tie a simple overhand knot and get it all the way up to the end. Basically you've got a loop with the overhand knot on the bottom and this is going to be your stopper when you get done for the bracelet. Once you get that cut and burnt on both ends and you tie an overhand knot, you simply wrap that around your wrist and that's going to be the basics or the basis of your bracelet right there. The next part of this is to set this up so you can start making your weave on the bracelet itself and there's a hundred different ways of doing that. Uh, you can actually just simply hold it in your hand and do what I'm about to do but I'm going to actually strap this down to actually going to put some nails into this board so that this is stretched out along the board and I'm going to hold it up here. Uh, usually I just do this freehand but I'm going to hold it up here so that you can see better what I'm doing. You don't have to do it on a board unless you just think this is easier for you. I'm just doing it so you all can see that. So again, this is going to be the, the basic structure for the bracelet. And I've made this with tan and I'm going to then put OD green paracord as my weave. So uh, you can do it any color you want to. It doesn't really matter, obviously. But uh, I'm going to show you those two because those two are different colors. Plus I like everything that's earth tone color. So that's my choice. Now to get the paracord to basically go from, you want to leave about an inch up top and an inch at the bottom so everything can connect properly, you're going to need to make a weave all the way that length minus basically two inches. So because we already know the length of that, what we want to do is we want to get a foot of paracord. That's one foot of paracord for every inch that we're going to weave all the way down that bracelet. So that's what I've got here. I've got about uh, a little over six feet of paracord to make up the bulk of the bracelet. And again, it's not a huge issue if you cut more. You just don't want to cut not enough cordage. And you can also do this bracelet where all of this is one big piece. Um, it's a little bit more technical. So in this beginner video, what I thought I'd do is just show it with uh, different pieces. So this is one piece. Obviously, this is another separate piece. The next part of this is if you, and I'm sure you will, but you'll watch a lot of videos on YouTube on how to do this. And this is the way my family does it because quite frankly, we're interested in having a bracelet that is functional and not necessarily a, uh, all about fashion. But all you do is tie a simple knot and slide that knot to where you want it on your bracelet. Okay, so again, you're going to leave this space right here for your knot on your tan piece to slide back through and fasten it to your wrist. That is step number one. 
Now what we're going to do is I'm going to try to get a better angle on this so that you can see the actual weave and how we go about doing that. Next part is real simple. Once you get in a rhythm, it goes rather quickly. So basically what you've got is you got a knot that is again about an inch from the top of the loop. And I've got two even ends of paracord on the other, on either side of the knot. So let's just start with the right. We're going to take the right and we're going to make one loop and lay that loop on top of the tan portion of the main bracelet. I then take what was the left, lay it directly on top of that, right alongside the tan, bring it in behind of the tan, and then pull it up through that loop. I then cinch all this together, pulling it tight. Then I do the same thing on the left. So now I take a loop on the left. I lay what is on the right on top, right next to the tan, put it in behind the tan, and then pull it out on the left side. And I cinch that up. So I'm simply going to follow that pattern all the way down until I got enough of the bracelet that I want, which is basically I'm going to run out of paracord. I'm going to do that and then I'll come back to you. So I've got a good start here as you can see. But uh, what happens is you're making one of these things and let's say that you run into something where somebody interrupts you or something and you forget, which side did I do? It's real easy to see. You can see the piece that is going uh, parallel to the, this is the main, what I'm referring to as the tan main portion of the bracelet. You'll see that on this side, on the bottom, the very bottom, there's a small OD piece that's parallel to these two tan pieces. And it is on the very bottom. You can see right there, compared to this one that's up. So if you need, you can come up with your own methodology, but for me, I just look for that. And I know that because this one's on the bottom, that's the side I need, now need to make a loop on and then continue back to the left, right, left. And so every time I do that, for example, if I make a loop right now, you'll notice that that one is on the bottom. And so now that that's on the bottom, I know I need to make a loop over here. So I've got the basic bracelet put together now. And this is one big piece. Again, this is a little over, what was it? Uh, a little over six feet long. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to, this is the extra that I had. Uh, if I was doing the King Cobra stitch and I wanted to keep this all the same, then I would cut this extra long, basically double that six foot up to 12, 13 feet. And then I would start my wrap right back. And that way I don't have to cut another piece. But for us as beginners, when we're doing this, uh, I'm going to make three separate pieces because I'm going to make this a different color too. Um, so I'm going to cut these off as close as I possibly can to the bracelet that I just made and I'm going to burn those in there as well so that they're all fused together. So as you can tell from right there, that's the paracord that I just cut. So I'm going to fuse that together. And the closer you get this and make it flat, the more comfortable it is going to be on your wrist. So you want to keep that as flat as you can. So now I've made my next cut, which is right there. I'll do the same thing there. Again, doing everything I can to burn that, fuse it all together, and then flatten it out so that it is comfortable on my wrist. So our next step is to add basically the same exact thing that's right here. I'm going to add in a wider version on the outside, and that's going to be your double cobra stitch. So again, you could basically not cut these off and, and uh, burn them off for the edge. You could just simply have a long enough piece and just double right back. But for ease of seeing how all this goes together, I wanted to again have this part, which is this part right here, which is the tan, which is the main portion of the bracelet the cobra stitch, and then the double cobra stitch, I'm gonna do in tan, um, basically coyote brown, and, and so it'll look two-toned. So what I've done is I've cut a piece that is gonna be at least twice the length of the cordage that I cut before. So I've cut this piece 
uh, to be almost 18 foot long. And I'm basically going to start it in the middle behind the bracelet that we've already started. And because I don't want a large hump on top here, I'm going to start the bracelet down into here, the second stitching. I'm going to start it down, one rung down basically. So all I do is do like I did before, which is basically start the first stitch. And again, this is exactly like the stitch before to get everything started. And I like to start it right there. Again, basically one rung down on this stitch. Now, I'm going to start weaving again, just like I did before. So what I'm going to have is a cobra stitch. And so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go all the way down with the tan and I'm going to have a tan and then an OD and then a coat, brown or a tan, whatever you want to call it, stitch. Now what I like to do is basically where you have these nodules on the, the first cobra stitch, I'm going to situate that right in between there so that you do get that gap and you do get to see the OD and the coyote brown at the same time. So I'm going to do that all the way down through here and then I'll come back to you. So I'm, now that I've got about three or four <clears throat> on here. I'm gonna go ahead and do two more on camera so you see what I'm doing. It'll, a little bit easier to see. I think it was pretty obvious what I did to start it. Now, again, so that you can see what we've done. Here's the part that I was talking about in the last stitch, this part right here, which indicates I need to start my loop on this side. So I make my loop, make my loop, lay this on top of it. And then the piece that I laid on top, I pull in behind and pull through that loop. And then again, I cinch that down. Now I've got this part right here that I was mentioning before. This is always my indicator. You might find a different part that you like, but that's my indicator that I need to be on this side. So again, I make a loop, put, I'm making a loop with the left portion of paracord I take the right portion of paracord, put it on top of that, wrap it completely behind the whole bracelet, and then pull it back through the loop, and then cinch it up. So that's two more stitches there on that. Now, uh, a word of caution to you. You'll see a lot of guys and gals that when they're doing this, they, they're they take great pride in the fact that this is really, really tight. I understand that it makes for a really pretty bracelet. Uh, the problem with that is that when you need to use it and when you actually have to cut it and start pulling apart, it's incredibly hard to take apart. I've had to actually utilize a bracelet before, take it apart to utilize it in a class. Um, so uh, if your hands are cold and you have an incredibly tight bracelet, cutting it with your cutting tool is going to be about the only way you can get it untied because it's so hard to get untied. So when I do this, I pull it tight, yes, but I don't pull it so tight that you can't uh, get it untied with cold uh, bare hands. So here we have basically almost the finished product. So again, from the get-go, this piece that's attached to the nail inside is tan. That's what fit my wrist exactly. And then inside here, this is what is OD. That's the OD green paracord that was basically the first Cobra stitch. And then on the outside, I have yet again put Coyote Brown on the outside tan. Most people call it tan, but it's Coyote Brown um, paracord on the outside. And now I need to cut off what little bit of extra that I have. And I'm gonna burn these edges so that it all is fused together and then I'll have a finished bracelet. So here's the finished bracelet. <clears throat> it's uh, basically you wrap it upon itself, stick the knot that you formed in the very beginning into that loop, and you have a bracelet. And basically what you're going to end up with is, what is that about? A little over 30, 30 foot of paracord right here, real easy like. 
in one paragord bracelet. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, just shoot us an email, info at naturereliance.org. I'm Craig Cottle with Nature Reliance School. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.